Lopez wants it away. And it's hit deep to left center. Andrew Jones on the run. This one has a chance. Home run by Piazza. And the Mets lead 3-2. Beto behind the net. Sweet to the front. He's gone. Sports Talk on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. That is right, 401. Welcome to WHPC Sports Talk here on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm Michael Merlo. I've got Ross Levine, Braden Daniello, and Matt Leonard with us today. Guys, how are we doing on this very fine Monday afternoon? Um, indifferent. Indifferent? I'm indifferent. Why is that? Well, okay, so I'm going to start with the Mets by this, by the way. They won three out of four. Um, Shocker, you're starting here. (laughs) Um, and the reason why you feel indifferent, they were not good, and I'm concerned, because, yes, they did win three out of four, and thank God they did, but I... I have concerns about this lineup. This lineup scares me in a bad way. Mike, what did I tell you last night Ross was going to start the show with, and was I wrong? You were not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to start with the Yankees, too, but... Well, that, that's concerning, too, yes. I that also we'll, we'll start with the Mets today, because, <laughs> you know, the Mets deserve to be praised for many reasons. One, they won three out of four over the weekend. Number two, they had an absolutely fantastic day Saturday afternoon and evening with their old-timers day. They knocked it out of the park. They couldn't have yes. done a better job. Steve Cohen, uh, who everybody else, Jay Horowitz, uh, Howie Rose, everybody that put it together did an unbelievable job, so they deserve a ton of credit for that because it was an awesome day. One of the greatest days I've ever had at the ballpark. E- I easily. I don't get how anyone could not watch it and not enjoy it. I don't understand. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> the introductions were unbelievable. Uh, the And you could argue that the introductions were just as good as the game because, listen, I don't know what you expected in the game whether you have a bunch of older guys going mm-hmm. out there yeah. trying to play baseball. I... I, I, I yeah. Thought of it as watching almost like a beer league softball game. That's yeah. that's how you got to think of it. And it was somewhat, you know, guys could play. Mookie Wilson looked very good. Andy Chavez looked like he could still run around in center field and play a good center field. But there were obviously guys that were older and didn't look so great that didn't look good. So the game was good. The introductions were good. It was just a great event. And shout out to the best owner in sports, Steve Cohen. Now yes. let's get to the let's get to the baseball. Let's get to the nitty gritty. They did win three out of four, and I thought they didn't look as great as they should have. I agree. But they won three out of four. They yeah. pitched well for the most part. I'm not complaining. I, and now we see what they can do against a very good Dodgers team coming up tomorrow. I, I look. By the way, shout out to Cohen for doing that. That was. That was outstanding. He paid it. for all of their airfare and their hotel for everybody oh, that, was, that you, came in. You can't something you, that the Wolf Ponds would never do. No. Yes, to be honest. Yeah, you can't you can't beat stuff like that. You but. see what Ray Knight said, Russ. What, yeah. what Ray Knight said in a, in a press conference after yeah. Old Timers Day. He goes, "I love the New York Mets. I hate yeah. the Will Ponds. Just straight <laughs> like that." I lo- well, love that, I, I don't I don't blame him. Um, and. In terms of the actual Mets team in 2022, um, they look, they won three out of four, and they were lucky to win three out of four, particularly on Friday, because if they lost that game and then they lost yesterday, that would have been a disaster. Let's be honest. If they split with the Rockies, it would have been horrible. 
Um, disaster is a strong word. I wouldn't have been happy. It would be I, bad. I wouldn't yeah. have said disaster. I wouldn't I mean, say cancel the season. Well, Ross, there was a tweet last night that went around oh, on yeah. Twitter, <laughs> and this is you 100%. <laughs> oh, the Mets have won 80. So the Mets record is 82 and 47. Yeah, 35 games over 500. Fantastic. They're fantastic. So the tweet reads, the Mets have won the World Series 82 times and have been eliminated 47. That's how people view Met losses, and we need to stop that. There is a narrative around every time the New York Mets lose a game, that the world is ending, that the season is over, that no, there's something uh, to be concerned about because they're the New York Mets. Ne- Let's just relax. Not, it's a 162-game <laughs> season. It's August 29th, the dog days of August. August. Let's just calm down. This team is very good. They are going to be fine, and they have a big test coming up. And I'd like to think they're going to play up to their opponent starting this week. Um, look, I I hope you're right, and I do think they'll win a game. I they're going what day? They're I'm going tomorrow. So when? Oh, tomorrow. When? How can you, when how can you be so negative? Oh, when win. every can time that you go, because I go. They, that's why they win. <laughs> Against the Dodgers, so yeah, Ross is the reason well, the Mets I, win the game. Not because they're good, not because no, they wow. play well. Because Ross is in okay. the building, they okay. win. Okay, when Degrom pitches, <laughs> I'll give Degrom the credit because Degrom is one of the best pitchers I've ever seen. So okay. that's different. Uh, well, if the fact that I could make Trevor May look pretty good, that tells you something. Yes, you made Trevor May look good. <laughs> yes, that, that is the I, scenario. I made May look very good, and I made Lugo look really good. And Lugo's been better lately. But, yes, very good. Um, at, but in terms of the actual lineup, the lineup concerns me for the Mets. And I'm going to tell you why. If Lindor, and I'm not getting on Lindor because Lindor has been great this year. If Lindor and Alonzo are struggling, this team has no shot. The offense, no shot. because, yeah. And that's a fact. Because Lindor is now 1 for his last 21 at the plate. 0 for he, 19. 0 for 19. And I'm not putting it all on him. Because other guys need to be better. But this lineup is not as deep as I originally thought. It's not. Why? Because Francisco Lindor's on a cold streak? No, it's not Lindor's fault. If anything, the lineup is longer. Because you have guys like Jeff McNeil and Mark Canna. They're unconscious at the plate right now. So, by you're actually contradicting yourself because you would agree with that statement because you watch the games. The lineup has actually gotten longer. Because, yes, Francisco Lindor, who's been arguably the Mets' best player this season, has struggled. We're not knocking him. He's got to get out of it during this series. We get it. So, he's all for his last. 19. Yes. Alonzo has picked it back up over the weekend. Yep. Nimmo, for the most part, I th- and I've been very critical of Nimmo, he picked it up over the weekend. He had a good couple of days. Yes. Marte's been great. So you have one through four right there. Whoever's batting fifth, whatever. I'm okay with the yeah. production there. And then you've had McNeil and Kana, um, who have been unbelievable 6 7. So the lineup has actually gotten longer. I know, but look at the last two weeks. Their offense has been kind of dreadful. If you look at like a couple of games here and there, it's been good. But like outside of that, it's been kind of dreadful. I mean, even against the Rockies, three runs in the one Degrom pitch, which is okay. Um, it was good enough to win. Yeah, but good. but yeah. Ro- here's the thing about it. Like I- I'll agree with Ross. The Mets over the weekend, a lot of the time, I feel like they struggle with runners in scoring position. But and a big but, you have to keep in mind that. With the rotation the Mets are running out right now, with the exception of some of the bullpen pieces, they can afford to win a game three to one if they have to. You you can yeah. win it with this rotation. You could the worst pitcher over the weekend. I have the lines here. The worst pitcher over the weekend was Chris Bassett, and he threw the most out of each pitcher this weekend. He threw seven and a third, eight hits. He only struck out one. But other and even Bassett, he, people like to say, "Oh, well, look at his ERA. He gave up four earned runs." Oh, he no, was fine. He, yes, he had one bad inning, and he you know what he did? And you know what he did? Start. The next inning, he came out, and I think he got through it on six pitches. One, two, three. He's great. I, 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 he's he's the ultimate bulldog as, as a starter. He's great. Mm-hmm. I, I love that. I there's outside the ground. There's not. I mean, and of course, I, I do love Scherzer, but outside of those two, I don't love anybody more than Chris Bassett. Outside those two guys. Well, he's been phenomenal. Yeah. And you could argue his record should be better than 11 and 7. It should be. And on top of it, their lineup... Like, listen, I'll agree. They didn't didn't hit... You know, particularly well this weekend. No. I mean, they scored the seven runs on on Friday. That was yes. a great win. Uh, you know, they score three runs in their other two wins. Fine. And like Braden said, okay, you could afford to score those. You know, you could afford to lose close games or win close games. Excuse me, by not scoring a ton of runs. But that's not always going to happen because 
and I was staring at the man last night, Billy Epler did not <laughs> improve the bullpen, and that'll be a discussion in a little bit. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, because boy. watching Michael Givens yesterday was just putrid, and watching him and any other time. Well, is, well is yesterday putrid. he did okay, but the game on Friday night he didn't do. Yeah. I mean, if you want to look at the positive, Michael Givens, ZRA went down to what was it, ten point nine, like nine point, point, point something, eight. Right it now. went down, yay! No, but Givens was lucky to get out of the no, thing yesterday. Yeah, absolutely. With, if it wasn't for the pickoff move, he would have gave up a run probably. Right, maybe, maybe even more because then he gave up another hit. It, it was just, it was not good. But <sighs> either way, the lineup has to be better, and I'm confident it will be. Why should? I have the lineup has been great outside of a few weeks. The lineup's been great all season long, and I trust that they will figure things out and get back to what they're doing because that's what they've done. They really haven't hit home runs. That's one of the things they haven't done, and they haven't done it all season long. But you would like to see a little bit more production when it comes to the home runs. And and, you know, it's funny because when they first got Lola back, Nick went rough, and they were all hitting. Everybody was like, Ever did a great job. Well, where's the praise now? Because Vogelback's not been good. Again, I'm not ripping these Vo- players because I'm not, no, I'm not you wanna, doing that. You want to rip Naquin, rip Naquin. Ruff hasn't had many opportunities. That's fine. I'm not going to rip Vogelback. No, I'm he not came, ripping these guys. He came here. He, he started off great. He's yeah. been fine since. Maybe he's cooled off a tiny bit, well, but he's been fine. He's not killing this team by no, any stretch no, of the imagination. But, they, these guys, but to me, this felt inevitable, and I'm going to tell you why, because you have guys that these are not these are guys that are not everyday players for a reason. Okay, Naquin's not. You know, I'm not ripping these guys because this is who they are. They I weren't brought to, here to be everyday players. Though. If you yeah, have to say are. you're not ripping these guys, you're probably ripping them. <laughs> I'm not. Ripping, well, I don't rip Vogelback. I love Vogelback. You just ripped Vogelback like two well, seconds ago. No, because he is who he is. What does not, that mean? He's he's a he was hot for when he first got here. Yeah, he's a streaky player. Yes, he's a streaky player. I'm not. I. I like Vogelback. I'm not, you know, he and he could be a little bit better, yes, but but he's not one of those guys. Like the, I know what you're, I know what you're about to say. And Naquin is absolutely one of those guys. And I think Ruff, as of late, has definitely been one of those guys that they're not everyday players. No, that they're guys that play they maybe are who start they are. two or three times a week, pinch hit a couple of times a week. That's what they are. Vogelback's a guy that you put in there 130, 140 times a year. He's a guy that is going to be streaky. That's just the way the type of player is that he is. So I'm not going to get on Vogelback. He's a streaky player. He's not on a streak right now. He will get there. You live with that. Just like the Yankees live with Judge and Stanton being streaky players, you will live with Vogelback being a streaky player. You don't love it, but you'll live with it. Yeah. The other two guys, Naquin, not an everyday player, a guy that oh. has been putrid of late. I feel like Naquin can't even make contact when I watch him play. Yeah. Right. I he, feel like he swings and misses. It's almost like watching Escobar as a lefty. <laughs> <laughs> so, I watch oh Escobar. I, Escobar, let, Escobar came up, what was it, in the eighth or the ninth inning? Ninth last, inning. Yep. Yeah. Ninth and inning. I saw him batting from the left-hand hand side of the plate, and I'm like, all right, let me go see what's on the barbecue right now. Like, this is, <laughs> this is horrendous. I, I know what's coming. I, unless... Escobar, at this point, I don't care. Like, put him from the right side of the plate. I know he's a switch hitter, and it was funny because I looked at, you know how they show the graphics before the yeah, game of, yeah. like, if a guy is a right hand or left hand? They had Escobar as a righty. I'm like, so why is he coming up as a switch hitter right now? I'm like, I don't know. It's just weird. I, I feel like Escobar, I'm happy to, you know, to see him back a little bit, but if you're going to play him between Beatty, and then you got to make a choice when Guillaume comes back ultimately. That's so true. Yeah. you got to make a choice with the infield there, definitely. Yeah. Who played third yesterday? Because he didn't start. Beatty. Beatty did. Beatty. Yeah, Escobar Beatty. Started. Beatty started. Yeah. And, Beatty, and Escobar came in as a pinch runner for Vogel back in yes. the yeah. seventh or eighth. And by the way, I this is so... The off, I know you can't go back in time, and you know Escobar. A lot of people like that signing because it's a two-year deal. He was very good last year. Professional hitter, but great he, clubhouse guy. And you can't, you know, take that no, away from him. No, no, no. Clubhouse A plus. He's great in the clubhouse. And defense really has been for the most good, part A plus. But, yeah. but if you're mm-hmm. judging based off of hitting, he. I know you don't like. I'm not going to get on the GM for this because I, I expected better too. Um, that's a big D minus because he just cannot. I'm sorry. He no, can't, it, he can't hit. It looks like really? a it, it looks like a bad signing, 100 yeah. percent. Because you expected this guy to be able to hold down the four to third base, and you didn't, you know, want to have to bring up your top prospect at that position. But listen, they've found guys to kind of. 
get by it. Uh, Guillaume was great before he got hurt at third base. But, yeah. Now they've used Beatty a little bit. And Beatty, I think, is really starting to come along. He's starting to really yeah. get his feet wet. And I, I don't have a problem with Beatty right now. I don't think I will. No, he's a young player. You got to deal with the growing pains. That's that's just comes with the territory of a young player. He, we all know, he probably was a little bit rushed when he first got called up. And, 100%. Yep. And you know, you got to live with what you got. Your made that was a major loss. That was a big loss because you you lose a little bit defensively with him. A lot of bit defensively. A lot of it, have a yeah, great his glove's been phenomenal. He's been phenomenal with the glove and. You know, you lose a little bit of the offense, a little bit, just because he was a guy that could provide good at bats, make contact, gets on base, gets Mm -hmm. on base, and you're losing that. I think, to me, the lineup, this, again, I talk about inevitable, that was inevitable. At some point, the Yorme loss was going to come back and bite them at some point. 516 572 7440 is the number to join. You want to talk about Mets Old Timers Day over the weekend? You want to talk about the games over the weekend? Football later on. I got somebody to laugh at, and it's a team in this city in New York, and it's not the Giants. <laughs> oh, um, oh boy, here we go. How much of a joke that franchise looked yesterday. <laughs> we'll get to that in a little bit. But uh, we are sticking with the Mets for a little bit longer. Uh, during Old Timers Day, there was a report out there that, well, I shouldn't say a report, a reporter went up to Steve Cohen and asked him about Jacob deGrom directly, and... Cohen's answer was exactly what you would want from the Mets' point of view. I'm paraphrasing here, but Cohen basically said, DeGrom's the best pitcher in the in the league. We love him, yeah. and we're going to do everything we can to bring him back. But ultimately, it is his decision. So you got the Mets' side of it that, listen, they want him back, obviously. I, I think the only way the Mets wouldn't have wanted him back is if, God forbid, something was to happen toward the end of the season or the postseason where he wasn't able to pitch. I think that's really the only reason why they wouldn't bring him back another injury. But he looks good right now, and I don't want to jinx anything. But if he's healthy to finish this stretch run, he will be a New York Met next year. I have no doubt about it in my well, mind. It's a matter of it, does Degrom want to be here? I mean, that's a big that's a big piece. I I don't I'm not sold that he does, and it just. It's a shame. It's 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 Sal. It's funny. So I was listening to this on on the fan. Sal yeah. Licata had his own radio show, and a caller was so pissed off at Degrom because he, you know, the fans give you know they love Degrom and like yeah, you're of talking course. about opt outs and like it just not you know they weren't in love with it and yep. you know I I I feel bad. I I feel I feel that that fans pain because. You you love the player and you're an, upset with the guy because he wants to opt out and he, you're upset that he may not want to be here. So that that's I worry about Degrom in terms of wanting to be here and you, unless he, the Mets are his highest bidder, I don't see him being back. Well, the Mets will be their highest bidder. I have no doubt about it in my mind. But the one thing I got to say about Degrom and I've come down on both sides really on this whole situation. But a lot of fans and a lot of people in baseball were upset with him because of what he had said when before the injury, after the injury, that he was opting out after the season, no matter what. Yes. And listen, I can understand that. I, I can because you are the greatest pitcher in baseball. You're one of the best pitchers the game has seen in a very long time, probably since Pedro. Ooh. And no matter what you were going to get a massive contract on the open market, even if he didn't pitch the season, because we just saw Noah Syndergaard throw two innings and get $21 million from the Los, the Anaheim Angels, okay? Los Angeles Angels, whoever you want to call them. So you saw this guy get that amount of money. You're 10 times better than him. Of course you're going to be able to get $45 million for the one year to try and prove yourself to get a longer-term contract. So Jacob DeGrom was just being completely honest with the fan base, with the franchise, I'm opting out. And he never claimed that he didn't want to be here. The only thing we've heard are bogus reports, in my opinion, bogus reports that he doesn't want to be here anymore. I mean, I don't think it's the fans. I like, I what I mean by don't want to be here. I mean, new like he the likes city. the, the, the city. media too. I think he doesn't like being I that much involved yeah. with the media. 
Yeah, like when I say what I'm what I'm saying, it's not because of the fans. It's not because of well, the <clears> fan base <throat> adores him. Yeah, the fan base adores. Oh yeah, them. It, it's not the fans. It's not even the Mets. I just think it's it's New York. I don't think, and it's the me. I don't think it's anything the Mets did wrong or anything like. Yeah, you can <sighs> get on him for maybe how they handled the injury last year, but outside of that, I don't think there's really much you could really blaming the Mets for. I mean, it's mostly the city. That's kind of what it is. It's what goes along with being in New York City. And, and again, Max Scherzer did not want to be here. The Mets offered him $43 million. Now he's here for the next two or three years. I think the same thing will happen with DeGrom. And, and, I, don't, and I don't buy these reports. i got to hear it from him that he doesn't oh. like New York. If you hear it from Jacob DeGrom that he doesn't like New York, fine. But we haven't heard it from him but, yet. But that. But I'm just saying. Let's say that did come out. I'm not. I'm not saying it's going to. But let's just say in the hypothetical world that it did. Let's say he did say that. Okay. Would how would you feel about him right now as a fan? You love the guy. You root for the guy. He's one of the best pitchers you've ever seen. And you're hearing about Op Degrom. Like, would you? How would you feel then? Like, because you love him now. How would you feel then? It'd be really tough. I yeah. mean. Knowing his motives, knowing exactly what he wants, how how could you root? I mean, you're gonna root for him because he's on your team. You want your yes. team to succeed, and I obviously want the guy to succeed because mm-hmm. if he's succeeding, the team is succeeding. You would think. So yeah. I'm not gonna root against him, but I would be very upset. And at that point, he would be dead to me after the season. I mean, Ooh. and we brought about we brought it up last night sitting for yes, dinner. We did Matt and I, and our station manager Sean. If he was to leave. Mm-hmm. How would you feel about him? And I, I would hate it. I, I mean, no matter where he goes, if he left and he took less money elsewhere, I would hate the guy. I really would. I would burn his jersey. I have his jersey. I would burn it. I'm okay. I'm being dead serious. I'm no, not. I, being, I, I I am with you. I think I think I own two degrees, but yeah, like I they'd be gone in a day. It it depends where he goes. Uh, for like, I mean, I would obviously be very upset anyway, no matter where he goes. Mm-hmm. But what if he goes to the Yankees, Ross? How would you feel then? I would still not be happy with the guy because and I'm going wow. to because to, because the Yankees are looked at like this high yes of course you know team top team well I feel like that's like a Kevin Durant thing where you're like you're, mm. it's a, where, where you're kind of like you're just hey I can't beat this great team I'm going to join them like it would not it would to me it would be a bad look it would actually be a worse look actually and I hate I hate to have this conversation because we don't know what's going to happen and I love Jacob Degrom he's one of my all time favorite players. So let's see what happens. But I don't want to rush to things yet. We're not there yet. Uh, 516-572-7440 is the number to join. You want to talk about Mets Old Timers Day, the Mets, the Yankees, the Giants, the Jets, whatever you want to talk about in the sports world. And not in the sports world. The VMAs were last night. You guys see uh, <laughs> Young Gravy and yep. Sherry Nicole? Yep. Addison Ray's mom out. That was that was something. <laughs> I already kissed her on the red carpet, and I was like, what are you trying to start here? There's a video, actually, of, like, I guess I don't even remember who was on stage, but like if you there's a small there's a video <laughs> and in the corner it's them two making out and somebody's oh talking my on God. stage. I was, I was like, wow. This is serious. Wow. Uh your WHPC weather forecast powered by Pantano's Gourmet in Hewlett, Uniondale, and Garden City Park. Currently in Garden City, New York. It is eighty four degrees. Feels like eighty nine. Not a bad day today. Should get down to around seventy six tonight. So enjoy the beautiful skies, because we are getting to that fall weather, and we cannot wait for football season and playoff baseball. But we're not there just Good yet. time of year. It's a great, it's a perfect time of year. Uh, very quickly, shout out to the Mets. I uh, forgot to mention this before. Retiring Willie Mays' number. Yes. yes. Uh, again, it just added to a perfect, perfect weekend, and it was kept a secret. And Sandy Alderson had said something in a press conference after the game, after the Alzheimer's game. He had said... I'm shocked that something this big was kept a secret in the New York Mets organization that nothing leaked out. <laughs> and it was. It was a surprise to everybody, so it was great. It was, awesome. it was It was a great thing. Uh, I think the original owner of the Mets, if I'm getting this right, yes, she, um, like on her name, she was the one that really wanted Willie Mays' number retired. And I think mm-hmm. it's a good thing that Steve Cohen is not only honoring Mets history, he's done a great job of that so far, but you're honoring New York baseball history, which you became. The Mets became a mm. mixture of the Dodgers and the Giants, the Brooklyn Dodgers and the New York Giants. It's a good thing yeah. that the Mets are honoring their history. They honor Jackie. Everybody honors Jackie Robinson, but the Mets went all out to honor Jackie Robinson. They gave him a freaking rotunda, and it's a beautiful rotunda when you walk right into City Field. The number is very big when you walk in and did a great job. And yeah, that was Steve Cohen. That was way before him, so... And- 
They've always been about New York history, and it's great. Yeah. And it's good that the Mets are now going to honor the other side. And yeah, it's it's great. It's great that they, that they did that. It's it's funny how that Howie and Wayne actually called that. <laughs> did that's, they really? They did both of them call it. Really, mo- mostly Wayne, but yeah, Howie was kind of on the sideline, kind of like drinking a beer. Like <laughs> it, I thought, Howie was on there emceeing the. Number no, he, retirement. He, he, no, he was. Like, he was no, the one that announced it. No, yeah, Howie, he was the one Howie announced it. it, but like during the actual game, they both kind of broadcasted. Mostly Wayne did. During mm. the broadcast itself, Howie was just kind of chatting it up with players. Yes. And Wayne was, you know. We heard, you know, we, at the stadium, you heard uh, Howie Rhodes and Wayne Randazzo doing, you know, I'm going to put this in quotation marks, play by play. Yeah. It wasn't really play oh, by play. Really? Of the old timers day? Yeah. So they were talking. That's t- so Whatever awesome. they were saying, we heard. And it was, and honestly, and I was talking with somebody, I forget who it was, it, it actually made the whole experience better. That's so great. I mean, I wouldn't want that every day before a special occasion. That's awesome. Well, I mean, you know, the game. Honest to God, is not you know that entertaining to the point where yeah, the they're game all older just, guys. You said it before, right? It was funny. It was great. It was a great experience. But I think having Wayne and Howie like talk throughout the game and, and interview guys that were on the field and talk about what was going on down there added to the whole experience. So, do you have a favorite moment from old time just since you were there? A lot of great moments came out of it. I know. My personal favorite is when they go Bobby Valentine. He walks out with a mustache and sunglasses. Benny Abagnani, he walked out and he was just like going crazy. I mean, really, he his arms up. <laughs> it was honest to God. It was between three guys that I get the biggest ovation. Really, for me, one was Benny. Okay, two was Pedro. Wow, really? And three, any order. But I think Cologne was one. Oh, Cologne go, duh. got the biggest one. <laughs> and it, it, it seems obvious at this point, right? It's like, oh, wow, surprise. Bartolo Colon got the biggest ovation. It was great. It's like, it's like 20 years from now, we're going to have old timers day. They're going to go, Daniel Vogelbach. Yeah. Everyone's going to go crazy. I forgot that Pedro was even coming. So when they announced, yeah. like, oh my God, Pedro's here. That's great. I love Pedro. Did you see the picture of him and the Grom talking in the dugout? Yep. It, That's it, beautiful. Yeah, I thought. Beautiful. What was my favorite part? I, I would say the introductions. The introductions okay. were so cool. Yeah. They, they really were. But enough with the Mets. Let's get to the Yankees. 516-572-7440, the number to join. I'm Michael Merlo. I've got Matt Leonard, Braden Daniello, and Ross Levine here on a beautiful Monday afternoon. You are listening to WHPC Sports Talk here on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. The New York Yankees started off the weekend as if they were back. Yeah. As if they were coming out of this. They won mm-hmm. five straight. They had scored a ton of runs Thursday night. Yes. And then came mm-hmm. Saturday and Sunday where they forgot how to hit. <laughs> forgot how to hit. <laughs> Pretty uh, much. Yeah, they that was I mean they this is why nobody knows what they are. Because they one night thirteen runs, you think they're back. You think like everything's good, right? Well, and not only just scoring thirteen runs, they, they did win four straight against yeah. well, two yeah. other good teams. Yeah, and then but then you thought like, hey, the offense going to get going along with the pitching, and right. and now all of a sudden, the offense is flailed. I mean, it was bad, and you know you can say, all right, yes, they Clark Schmidt started and whatever. Um, you can't expect greatness all the time from even him, but. The offense to me is the bigger issue. Um, Stan, even I mean that that's what's so crazy about Stan comes back, and they still can't do much. I mean, so <laughs> mm-hmm. for people that are like, oh, that's all we needed. This is what happens you re- when you rely so heavily on the long ball. This mm. is what happens. Well, they scored all 13 runs in that one no, game no. without hitting a home run. No, no, no. But all these guys are mostly home run hitters. I know that didn't True. happen in that game, but um, they. Something's just not right, and and Rizzo's kind of struggled. Stands, I know he's just coming back. It takes a little bit of time, but something just doesn't seem right. Here I mean, go. I got I got three. Names. The Oakland. What do you got? Not right. I got three names. I'm and I'm gonna leave okay. Stanton off of it because yeah, he's just coming back. He's just coming back. And my friend, who's a diehard Yankee fan, he said to me, "We have him on his, our fantasy team. We brought him back." He goes, "Stanton's terrible for like a week <laughs> wow. after he comes off of the IL." So just remember that. And he was kind of right with the first few games. DJ LeMayu, Anthony Rizzo, and a guy that's gotten a lot of cover from a lot of bad players so far on this team, Joey Gallo and Aaron Hicks, um, are the guys that really covered him. Josh Donaldson. I mean, Mm. we've talked about how bad he's been, but really has killed this team. It's been putrid. But DJ LeMayu and Anthony Rizzo, two guys that you've expected to be great for the last week or two, have not been good. Can I rip into a certain Yankee? Who are you going to rip into? 
or old as Chapman. Oh my God! Oh boy! This that is the thing. stupidest thing I've ever seen. I saw that post and I thought it was a joke. I thought it was a meme account on Instagram. Me too. I really thought they were kidding. I, was, I like had to check the profile. I'm like, does this guy have like 25k <laughs> subscribers and this is a meme or like is this serious? And I saw like the comments. I'm yeah. like, oh god, this is real. <laughs> yeah, Aroldis Chapman. For those that don't oh, know, Aroldis Chapman will be out. Well, how long was it? Is it indefinitely or would they give a timetable? What they say? I didn't see a timetable. Did I didn't I either. Feel like he went on the IL. He did. He's wrong. on the IL. Yeah. And because he has an infection in his leg due to a tattoo he got recently, that is, oh, I, I don't even. It's unfortunate. It's unlucky. But also, oh, yeah. I think part of it is just downright stupid. This it came out. Is. This came out during. Um, it was I think right before the Mets played their actual game. Yep. Against the Rockies on on Saturday, Saturday. night. And I got a tweet from somebody, and it said, "Are the Yankees becoming the Mets?" Because oh, <laughs> boy. that is a listen. <laughs> even this season, like we've had some freak injuries. The New York Mets. I mean, mm-hmm. Francisco Lindor the closes door. his finger yeah. in a door, but that is a Met injury. I mean, that is a hundred and ten tattoo. Of, if he misses like at least a month, that is such a Mets thing to happen. It's a Met thing to happen. 100%. Oh yeah. Yeah, I. I I mean, first of all, you, you you split with Oakland, which is just dumb in itself. I mean, I mean they are it, bad. They are a bad. Oh, they're bad. they're worse than the Rockies, bad. where the Mets beat three to one. They're much worse. Yeah. Can I, can I just say something else? Yeah. Like, why was the crowd in Oakland surprising? It was like the whole lower bowl was full. I was the, actually surprised because the Yankee fans travel. Yeah. Those aren't A's fans. Yankee yeah. fans travel, whether it's from New York to Oakland or or and guys guys on the West Coast. Yeah. They you know what sheet those tickets must have been, by the way. It like, probably went up a little bit though. For a the, little for bit, A's. but a little bit going up for the A's means twenty bucks for field level. You think the A's are still doing promotion nights, or do you think they just decided? I'm sure, to I'm give sure up they the are, A's? but I mean, who of who? Like no like, one. It's got to be like Reggie Jackson or old players, because who wants a Chad Pinder T-shirt? I'll get you a. Pri- I would. I'll get you. A, <laughs> I'll get you a price for uh, when the Mets go there. Oh, okay. okay. I I, I just, still think it'll. By the way, I still think it'll be more for the Yankees. Probably because on the Yankees, but yeah. yeah. I mean, first of all, when I saw the Yankees split with that awful Oakland team, I was like, when the Mets won three out of four, I'm like, the Mets did a lot better than what the Yankees did. I mean, the the Mets, uh, the Yankees, they get one hit, one one hit in eleven innings, which is against Oakland, which is sad. And then the other, the next game, just just one run. I mean, that's in, and then they're only, by the way, one of the two wins that they did have came off just one bat of Aaron Judge, and that was it. I mean, that, that was a that, three run shot he hit? Yeah. On Friday night? That was it. That was the only runs they got. It was like but how many run wins this year are just like that? Aaron Judge basically won him a game. Well, well, honestly, that's bad either. Honest that's, that's to God, bad. though. He's been a magical year. That's what he does. But, but the but, Yankees, up until, you know, I guess two months ago now, have ha- had such a magical year. It mm-hmm. wasn't just Aaron Judge. Other guys were contributing along with the magical year that Aaron Judge is having. Uh, I want to check something very quickly. The, how many run- They scored two runs on fr- on Saturday night. In 11 innings, yes. In 11 innings. Oof. 11 innings. The oh. runs that they scored in the like, 11th inning hit- from a wild pitch. And a hit-by-pitch. And then the top wow. off, I think you they lose the game on an error. I'm pretty sure. And yeah, they, they lost. On yeah, they lost on the error. Embarrassing. Yeah, that's so, like a really low, low. It's embarrassing. And then on top of it, you're getting. I mean, they didn't have. They had one hit maybe through six innings again, or no hits through like five on Sunday. Yep. I mean, just a putrid performance in the last two games of the series from what was supposed to be a like the Met, the, the Mets series. Was like a get right series, in my opinion. You yeah. beat a good team, you beat them down two games at your home building. Now you're feeling good, and you got to go out west and take care of your business. That's what we said about the Mets. You got to take care of your business at home. Look at what the Braves have had. Well, you- a very easy schedule. The Mets were getting that. The Yankees were getting a little bit of that, and the New York Yankees did not take care of their business over the weekend. And and you know. When you mentioned about the Braves, they did blow another game yesterday. So oh my God. they, you know, it took when I saw that it took a little bit of the sting away from the Mets loss. Oh, when 100%. I saw it, it took a little bit of the sting. By the it way, was, if there is a team that I want to win the World Series that is not the New York Mets, one hundred percent the St. Louis Cardinals. I'm so with you, strictly on the base yeah, nice, of the Pujols. Nice swan that's song, Pujols. That's Pujols, it. Pujols, Wayno, Molina, Wayno, and Molina. You, that, I want that one hundred percent. Back to the Yankees, though. Who again? Just. You got to do what you got to do, and and they did they did not no. take care of their business. Now, they are getting some help. 
I don't know if you consider this help, but Clay Holmes is coming back from his back injury. If he pitches well, it's definitely help. <laughs> the Yankees say that he um, fixed uh, you know, a little mechanical mechanical issue. They said his back not being sore should help. So we'll see what happens. You brought up Chapman. They lose Chapman. They weren't even using Chapman, though, in high leverage. They were not using Chapman no, in no, high leverage no. situations. So I don't think this is as big as of a loss as you think. Yeah, both both New York baseball teams are getting relievers back. I mean, you could the Yankees are getting Clay Holmes back, and the Mets are going to get Drew Smith back. Very different caliber when they're at their no, best. Very of different. Course, but I'm just saying they're getting relievers back. They're getting Tyler McGill coming back very soon. Yeah. He's the most intriguing guy yeah. coming back. We have no clue what he's going to look like out of the bullpen. Yeah. We have no I, idea. Well, I will say this. I'd rather see anybody else other than Michael Givens. I, I agree. Don't get me I started. fully agree. Don't get me started. Don't. I can't. Like. I can't stand that. Guy. I watch this man pitch, and I just want to puke. It's like it's <laughs> that bad. Like I was. I want you to. Do, I'll do. This was me in front of the TV on Friday night. Right. I'm sitting there, and who's the who's the Elias Diaz? I think yep. was up. Yeah, yeah. He's in. The, he comes up, yep. and I'm thinking, okay. Like, Givens, you have to throw one strike, and just maybe. To not maybe, a great catcher. Maybe I think that's maybe the trade was somewhat worth it, and the guy puts the ball in the gap, and you just. I just. Throw my head down. I couldn't. I was beside myself. <laughs> and thank God that Mark Canna exists. And thank God that Pete Alonso drove the ball on the ground through the left side and Nemo came around to score. That would have been a brutal loss. If they lost that at, game, that would be really... We've been talking about that the way we talked about the Yankees today. Yes. 10.91 ERA after that game. And it, and it could have gotten worse... It's if a, they yeah. didn't get the pick off the other night, yeah. now he has a 9.58 year. Yeah. What am I supposed to be happy? Like oh, no, other oh, teams this year and broadcasters Jeez. and players are all talking about the Mets' luck with their offense. I feel like Givens got so lucky last night. He That's legit did. luck. That's legit luck. You look yeah. at this lineup, and the only thing that stands out to me, and Ross was talking about the hitting earlier. I'm fine with the hitting. The pitching is the starting pitching has been great, but the Achilles mm-hmm. heel. That I will never forgive Billy Epler for improving, and obviously it's easier said than done. Obviously it's gonna, t- you know, the Phillies getting Robertson stings that more much because the Phillies yes. are in the division. But the like bullpen is continually. Prospect, you talk about Givens, <clears throat> and then I wish you could just go to every game that Trevor May pitches. <laughs> I mean, I watch him pitch. And I don't like, think Ross can even fix Givens. I don't think Ross can fix Michael Givens. <laughs> no one can fix Michael Givens. No one right now. The only person who could even attempt to fix Michael Givens is Michael Givens, and I don't see it happening. Yeah. It's tough to believe nope. that, and I and people are like, oh well, what what's Buck doing? I'm like, he can't pitch Ottavino and Diaz every night. Like, what do you true. want him to do? Very true. Like, come on. Yeah, I, I, I Trevor made to me. He's so inconsistent. It just, well, but again, Givens is far worse. I, I'll take anybody over over him. Heck, I'll take take on Adonis Medina. Who's in the minors? I'll take. Like, we have over to have him. someone. Yeah. I trust anyone in this building right now to pitch over Michael Givens. <laughs> Take yeah, that guy right. Fisher over Givens for sure. Yeah, oh, he was yeah. he pitched great. They sent him down the next yeah, day. Absolutely did. When, when I saw him, by the way, I know we have a call, but when Fisher pitched as well as he did, and he hasn't even thrown a pitch in the big leagues, oh, yep. and he did better than Michael Givens, that tells you. All <laughs> well, that, that, that was also that a phenomenal clown. story. That was a phenomenal story. It's, what yeah, happened with Fisher? It's, yeah, it's sure. sad about uh, I don't know ten year right. That's all I'm gonna say. We do have a caller on the line. Nine point five eight, Ross. Caller. Hi, this is uh, Charlie from Flow Park. What's going on, Charlie? Man, I'm loving this conversation so much. You can't believe. I, you know, this is classic New York baseball talk. Um, you know, I can't even listen to FAN. You guys are so much better than FAN. I don't Thank know you. why Thank they you, don't Charlie. give you. Thank you. I don't know why they don't give you two hours. Somebody, somebody just said when they when they see someone pitch, they want to puke. That is hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. I say it how I see it, Charlie. The way Michael Givens has pitched recently, I just, I said it oh. best. I just, I, I, I don't, I want to turn off the TV when he pitches. Unfortunately. There is nobody more passionate than New York sports fans. I lived in Philly for four years. It's like kindergarten compared to New York sports fans. <laughs> yeah. Is it really? I have, a hard, I have a hard time believing that. No, it's true. They just like to boo. <laughs> and, and riot and eat cheese steaks. Can I give you my all-time favorite baseball trivia question? You can't beat this question. Sure. Okay, what pitcher has the all-time best record against the New York Yankees? I'm trying to think individually. And the answer is why it's the best trivia question ever. Who's that? You don't want to take a guess? I'm thinking. It's the best. It just, the answer is so classic. And actually, when I was asked this about 40 years ago, I got it right away because the answer is so classic. All right, go. Pedro Martinez. 
Babe Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's that, ironic. You can't beat that. That's you can't amazing. Beat that. I love that. Yeah, keep up the great work, and let's get two hours going here. Thank, Thank you very you, much, Charlie. We appreciate right, the call. Good. Can we give uh, Charlie Sean's email address, like, privately? Can we just... send Charlie to the mound instead of Michael? <laughs> 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 oh, my God. He's a tough watch, though. That's the problem. Yeah. Like, Oh, I have no faith. Listen, believe no, me. No, 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 no. Not even that he's not good, all right? There are guys that just <laughs> suck, and they suck. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he, he's not. Like, he's uncomfortable to watch pitch. Well, th- his this, wind up, his whole situation just doesn't the, look here's good. The th- here's the thing about Givens. Obviously, his debut couldn't have gone worse. No, oh, of but course. but then he then he like lures me in. He's like he has a few decent out, and I was like, oh, this guy could really be good. And then what happens the other night happens. I'm like, oh, here we go again. It's kind of like with Trevor May, like. Every night, like the game against Cincinnati, I think it was mm-hmm. earlier. May got out of a bases little jam. I'm like, oh, okay, that's pretty good. And then he comes out and he like, I feel like he give him and Givens almost. It's like a guaranteed run. And I, yeah, I obviously I want to root for the guys, but it's like, yeah. I, it's tough. I, I know you're well, going out. Bad, you're, yeah, you're going out there, and I'm like, fuck, like anyone, you're throwing <laughs> the game away. You're not. It's right. like, oh my god, like I know you can't pitch out of your Diaz. I'll take anyone in the minor leagues. I could probably get Sean to pitch the eighth inning. This is oh, ridiculous. Wow. Like, Honestly, oh, my God. Like, like, no offense, when, Sean. I'm sure you could throw a baseball. Uh, like, when, when, when Buck puts Givens in, I think to myself oh, occasionally, Jesus. what's Darren Ruff doing? He pitched a good two innings. I'll take Darren later. Ruff. I'll take anyone. What's Darren Ruff doing right it's ridiculous. now? ridiculous. Yeah. You're not rooting for these guys. You're hoping they don't give oh, up yeah. runs. Yeah, exactly that's right. The like, but that's just like, that's the, why like, I'm almost being nice. Like, I want to root for them. I want them to do good. But I know when they go out there, it's like it's not going to yeah. happen. This is 2019. Diaz is not a closer, which well, is well, quite yeah. arguable. Worse. But but here's what I'll say though I they the Mets I mean again we still have a season that they're playing but just off season wise they better get like three if not four relievers this bull I mean I'm sorry. I w- I would practically clean house in the bullpen well they're gonna well, clean house I don't have many guys under a contract for next season so they're well, gonna have to make a lot of changes well, Diaz the only guarantee yeah. oh, yeah, you I have to give. keep him. you have to keep him. Yeah, I, and he is a contract. So and, yeah. good luck. And and I was so much like, oh, get Josh Hader now. Whoa. Oh, oh, no, 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 Ross, let's not yeah, go there. No, 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 no. The Padres no. are just awful, and I I cannot the be Padre. happier about their downfall. But anyway, five one six five seven two seven four four zero is the number to join. Back to the Yankees, as we always jump back to the Mets for whatever reason. But we are back to the Yankees, Talk who, the town. like you said, Ross, they. You don't know their identity. And the problem with this team is that they're too inconsistent for you to actually say, well, they're this. Because there are days where they look like they can win the World Series, and then there are days where they look like they're just going to lay flat on their back and get crushed in the postseason. Yeah, they're not, they're not, they don't, to me, if you don't know yourself and we're getting close to September, that's an issue. Um, It's, and I, look, could they win the World Series? Sure. I wouldn't pick them, but they could. And they could also lose in the divisional round. It, it really would not mm. it, it would not shock me. And the American League, for whatever reason, is opening up because Houston has not played as dominant. Their record is great, but they haven't looked as dominant as they've, you know, lately as they've been earlier in the season. Well, if they lose Verlander, yes, it was a calf injury. I don't think it's too much to worry about, no. but I'm not a doctor. But either way, the American League is wide open. See, the Yankees, I think, right now could, if they were playing at the yeah, level that oh, they were, course. could have a chance at beating this Astros team. But with the way they're playing right now, well, I can't even say they're going to come close. And you're right, the divisional round is tough because I think you got two legit wild card teams that, if they got hot at the right time, of could go all the way to the World Series. And that's the Toronto Blue Jays and the Seattle Mariners. I, I'm, I'm I'm kind of out on the Blue Jays. I think they're done. I'm sorry. Their I, lineup is way, has way too much talent in the, it. If the, they get the hot, Blue, it's over. Yeah, the Blue Jays are a team that I feel like if they make in, they could do damage if everyone stays healthy. And you got to keep in mind that, you know, we talk about them all the time. They do, they haven't been in the postseason in a while, but the Seattle Mariners are also a team. They're that's good. Oh, yeah. Starting to intrigue. They're and very and good. I'm happy that I wrote this down because you got the wild card race also. And. Mike mentioned how the AL how the AL is completely open up. You got Baltimore a game and a half back. Can you imagine Baltimore makes the postseason? They're, they're a great that story. Be, they won't go very far. Yeah, I know, but it would just be fun they won't to hold see. Up. It would be a, such a great story. The Twins are three games back, but the Twins have kind of been in a slide. If they make it yeah. in, it's, it'll be probably by the division. If the Yankees end up playing the Twins, we know that's a free advancement. It's another yeah. buy. It's yeah. a second buy. The Chicago White Sox, who have been underwhelming, Tony La Russa, 
He's got to get fired. I mean, it should have been done. If he doesn't get fired today. It should have been done a while you, ago. Listen. But it, it's not getting done, and that's this, the problem. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say my opinion on it. When the fan base is telling the manager to pitch run for someone <laughs> in a works. crucial point of the game. And it works better than what he wants to do. And then and, uh, it would happen weeks ago when he, the fan yelled to pitch, hit, pitch run for it with Adam Engel, and Adam Engel scored. Tony, listen, La Russa is a great baseball line, but the game has passed him by. Oh, I hate to course. say it. When people we... talk about the game passing someone by, Tony La Russa's picture probably comes up. I'm I just know, being yeah. honest. I know we talked about it. Did we put that in the vault at all? I know that audio. Which one? We talked about that um, when, when that happened a couple of weeks ago. The Adam, when he, the fan yelled at Tony Oh, La Russa. we didn't put that in there. We no, didn't we put should've. that in there. Th- that was unbelievable. That's a great... Great uh, video for it you. It happens, and Larusso's looking around like, "Oh crap! Like maybe we should he was do fall- that." He was and then Engel fall- runs out. Great he's idea. Probably, he's probably falling asleep. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> and then this guy woke him up. He's like, "Oh, I should probably do this," and he did it, and, and it, it ended up working, and they won the game. But if it hasn't happened now, if it didn't happen at the All Star break, what makes you think they're going to actually go through with this? It Whoa. wouldn't shock me if he was the manager next year. It's that sad over there. Wow. Oh, Jesus. If he comes back, imagine. Well, it's got to be 50 uh, 50 at this point. If I, it hasn't uh, been done already, why would you think anything's well, going to change? Well, the owner, when they first fired Luber, so they, they said it was the biggest mistake he ever made. So I don't know if he's going to make that mistake again. I mean, that, that's <laughs> you don't know. That, that's the only reason why they may keep him. Reinsdorf also is not the most yeah. intelligent man. But <laughs> it's, it's tough to keep La Russa because you look at the AL Central. Well, I agree. You look at the teams that are like the White Sox, talent-wise, should win this division, but they're not. And they they're should be so much mightily. better with the talent they have. The, not Cleveland, the, the Cleveland Guard. What's the Cleveland Guardians payroll? I'm just curious. It's very, very low. low. It's, like, it's extremely low. Like all, not as low as Oakland. Definitely. It's like it's bottom five in do. baseball. The bottom Guardians. five in baseball. This is like. It's money ball, except the team isn't winning. Like, the Guardians are there almost by default because the rest of the division is complete. Gu- the Twins fell apart. Well, the Guardians can pitch. But that the thing is about, true. The that thing about true. the White Sox, and they've always, the, the, the Guardians, of, in the, when they were the Indians, they always developed great pitching. So yeah. give them credit. They've been good this season, and they have Jose Ramirez. Hmm. But the thing about the White Sox, and I don't want to spend too much on the White Sox. I do want to get to football uh, right after this. The White Sox came into this year with a ton of injuries already. Then they were unlucky to start the year with injuries, but they did nothing in the offseason to improve this team much, and that's where they messed up. And, of course, having a bad manager. 516-572-7440 is the number to join. Let's get into the NFL here because, oh boy, do I have to laugh at a franchise. So... The Giants and the Jets played yesterday. Yeah, we're, we're both, by the way, laughing franchise. Like we both no, 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 are no, no, not no. good. No, no, no. <laughs> this is this is completely. There's nothing to do with talent. Nothing because okay. the Giants are terrible. And yeah. I'll say, and listen, I'm I'll, not ripping the Jets. We suck too. Before I say <laughs> before I say this about the New York Jets, <laughs> like know how I feel. The Giants are bad. The of Giants course. are gonna, the Giants are going to be a bad football team. So are the Jets, but the Giants are probably going to be worse. Yep. Yeah. But the fact that the New York Jets celebrated yesterday's win in a preseason game, well, that's... as if it was the Super Bowl, as if something important just happened, I I actually chuckled. I was like, they look like five year olds. I'm embarrassed for them after that. W- celebration of a preseason win. For the love of God, can you grow up? As as a Mets fan, it could be worse. Remember when the Mets didn't even win anything and the doors in spring training? Like, hey, let's pretend we won the World Series. Look, at that. the one of the worst things, like like when the Mets, like this was came back in 2019. Can we? Can, but, I, no, I have, no, I have no, a challenge. No, I'm going back to the Jets. I, okay. I, trust I, me, I have back. a challenge I'm for going us back. in a minute. But this this is the final <laughs> second. This is the fu- this is just one thing. When Dom Smith hit the three and walk off in 2019, yeah, they're, they're, the end the season, yeah, yeah. I'm like, like, why are you celebrating? You missed the playoffs. <laughs> like, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> That's number one. But at That's least a- it was a but at least it was a regular season I game. I don't care. It, don't it care. mattered to some some degree more than uh, preseason. I, I will okay, say that yeah. 2019 second half was fun. That was like, the, it of was. course they don't ma- they make, they'll make the playoffs, but that was like. A storybook ending. In, but the, in a the Jets, sense. Uh, they didn't make the playoffs, but it was fun to watch. Yeah. The Jets so were that. they were playing hard yesterday. I'll give them that. Quan Alexander had that huge hit, which I don't really agree with in the preseason. I get your last preseason game, but why? No, no reason for it. <laughs> and also, just yeah, the celebrating of winning a preseason game is just it, they. In no other sport, you would see that. And in football, you don't see that with other teams. 
especially with a team as bad as they're going to be this year. It's just it's laughable. It and I don't is. know why. I don't know why people aren't talking about it. It is laughable how they acted after that game yesterday and that hit. I didn't even think of that. You're right. It's the preseason. There's no I, reason for it. You're ta- he rocked. What was that he hit? I don't even remember. You rocked you're, that guy. You're playing tackle football. I get that, but there's like you know. An under the table deal, almost like you, you know, like there's a respect level here. You don't want anyone to get hurt this in the preseason. This is the preseason, okay, please, well we, for the love of God. Well, the Giants. I mean, to be fair, in the preseason, we are the um, the punching bag because we have been yeah, hurt but, all the time. But dirty hits like that, well, I, I always call it dirty because the preseason. Well, what's that in the regular season, the postseason game? I'd say good for Quan Alexander, well, but right, of look, course, look, it was a great hit. Oh yeah, but this is this. I don't care, I don't care if your starters are in. It's week three of the preseason, well, uncalled for. Well, look at the whole Kayvon Thibodeau. You know, the whole low, you know, hit, and it was I just, still don't think that was intentionally dirty. No, I understand that, but we suffered so many injuries over the last number of years, and we've led the league almost in that category. So it just probably, you know, it, it's it's again lunch. You know, the we we've been like okay, the fan, the the person that eats the sandwich of the NFL and the sandwich of the Giants. That's what we've been. We've been that bad in the last decade, particularly the last five. So years. they're like, they're like you know, the we've team everyone picks on, and you're the, saying, yeah. Listen, yeah, no doubt about it, the Giants have been terrible, yeah. but. And and by the way, the Giant. You know, I don't want to take too much into the preseason. Both teams did not look good yesterday. Oh, I no. watched the first half of that game and I laughed. That Flacco I'm, interception, the pick six was that was bad. I mean, come on. Good for the Giants, but Flacco, that was bad. Come on, you, you, to that defense, really? Yeah, that was. Who even who even well, caught it? Was anybody was even the, a starter? The, no. The, the Giants are gonna look. They have they have a very weak schedule, so they're probably going to win six seven. They're going to find mediocre. a way to get anywhere from five to seven wins. And they're shooting opinion. themselves in the foot like former Giant Plantico Burris in the draft. So yeah, I just, there's no. But the the one thing the one thing that's really funny about this is that there's no buzz because of how great the baseball teams in this town are. Mm-hmm. Like in New York, I'm excited for football. I'm excited to be able to turn red zone on and just sit there and do absolutely nothing with my day. And not watch the Jets or Giants score once. Exactly. <laughs> I'm, ex- I'm excited for that. Yeah. But I haven't had this feeling in a while where there's a baseball team, both baseball teams, yeah. that are so freaking great that you're going to have to tune into them every Sunday as well on top of your know, red zone. But for the Jets and the Giants, no buzz. Zero no. buzz. Because they suck. For, yeah, any, they suck. For, for both of these teams. <laughs> and I saw Jet fans celebrating this too yesterday, this win. Well, oh, come on. They were celebrating a preseason win yesterday. Please. Oh we're God. a boat party away from being the Giants. <laughs> <laughs> at, hey, at least the Giants were in the playoffs when they, went, they had that well, boat party. <laughs> Well, the last, I mean, so after good. that, it's been, it's been ugly. It's been really ugly. No, it's been terrible since there. I had to say it. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying that the Giants are there's a great franchise. They haven't been for the past. They've been an embarrassment. We talked about it know. last week. I think they're getting to the point of being irrelevant. Uh, well, we. But well, how irrelevant are you that you're celebrating preseason wins? Well, look. What's their preseason record? Okay. Have they won before the that? Jets were 3-0. They're 3-0. The pre- wow. wow. <laughs> that makes it so much worse. Well, first of all, the I will say this about the Giants. The Giants will be. I think <laughs> here's a positive. Dable. I think Dable will be a very good head coach. Okay. I think Joe Shane's gonna be a very good general manager. All right. But I, the rest of the team, I, I none of these guys outside of who Shane drafts are gonna be on this team. You gotta look at it that way. This is just a to me. This is a throwaway season. It the, really is a throwaway. Well, they season. have to still get. They still have to get rid of the players that yeah. were not on this roster. hundred percent. And by the way, so I expect it to be embarrassing. Yeah, I think Darius Slayton will probably be gone at this point by by the week's end. Yeah, I was about to bring up the trade rumors because Ross, you're one of your favorite receivers of all time, is to be on the trade on. block. Hold on, I think there's a serious chance Kenny Galladay's cut. Wow, I, I think Kenny like, Galladay cut. can get cut. not trade, just cut. Cut. Whoa! I don't. I mean, I I wouldn't have a problem if they did that, that but I wouldn't. I don't think it's going to happen because they're just I the could contract. see it. I just think that's pretty bold. It, it's this. I think you're going to see these guys play it out. Look, I don't think he fits this scheme as well. And look, Dable he, he usually coaches back their quarterbacks. He has not. 
Mm. He has not backed his quarterback. And Do you blame has... him? Your quarterback is Daniel Jones. Do you yeah, blame I, him? Oh, I don't blame him at all. <laughs> I, I'm actually in agreement with him. I, I think he will get benched, and I, I just think they're going to draft a quarterback. It's why I've... Benched for what you saw yesterday, though? I mean, I understand well, there was no offensive line well, in front of him. Tanking. But... We're tanking. <laughs> Two wins. He's saying, Let's you know, if, if he starts the season like that, then they got to bench him. God, but from what you saw from Tyrod Taylor yesterday, and again, well, I'm not well, taking too much into the preseason, but even... You how's know, Davis Webb looked? <laughs> he's a Hall of Famer. He's, <laughs> he's Hall looked of better than both That's of these guys. Saying. I'm telling you, he changed the game. <laughs> I'm kidding. He changed the game. <laughs> Daniel Jones, like, maybe a... And I never thought this coming yeah. into this year, because I, I did agree with the fact that maybe they would go to Tyrod at some point. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, I, I really don't know. Maybe Tyrod's just done. Like maybe no. he's just done. Uh, you, you look, here's the thing: Tyrod's a backup for and they gave him seventeen million because yeah. they know Jones is going to get hurt, and they they or be bad or be bad. And look, I I don't blame Dable and Shane. They don't have a lot of faith. They didn't draft him, and even if they did have faith, they didn't pick up his option. And they're going to draft a quarterback. That's and we, inevitable. And we've dis- we've discussed this, and I was having this conversation this morning actually too about Daniel Jones. Let's say. You know, in a hypothetical world, yes. that Daniel Jones comes out and he has a season around a good season, a, like a Jimmy G type season, where yes. okay, he's good, he's like a good, bigger Mayfield, he, maybe right, he may be good enough. Mm-hmm. Do you bring him back? And the pro, the, the really tough question is that well, you don't have an option for him next year. Like you would have to give him another contract, which is why you'd be forced to let, let him go because unless he has a season where you see. Every intangible of him becoming a franchise quarterback mm-hmm. or being a franchise quarterback, because that year four, that's what you should be already. Yeah. Then you bring him back. But if uh, you don't see any of that, then he's gone. Uh, and maybe d- did not picking up that fifth year option really it, it makes them good. rush this decision now. Because if they did have the fifth year option, maybe they could have if oh, he had a good year, yeah. maybe they give him an extra one. I don't know what the right answer is, but they, we're not going to find out until the end of the year. Well, I I think them not pick up his option. What they're doing is basically, this is your year, prove it, and we for, we don't have a lot of faith in you, but go out and prove us wrong. That's really what that was. But and, he, he has to prove them very wrong. Yeah, like and, very very wrong. And I and I've said I think he needs to be a top seven quarterback in the league to get warrant Oof. second year con- contract money. I really do. Oof. I don't think being a top 15 quarterback is going to be enough to warrant a second contract, especially when you factor in you want to start the rookie clock again, you want to draft a quarterback, and if you're in a position to draft a quarterback, which is a big if, you get, you have to. You have to draft a quarterback. You cannot go with Daniel Jones because knowing me, I know without a supporting cast around, I know he cannot play. I know that. We so, know he can't play him. Period. Well, he hasn't had a great team. I'm no, just, I agreed. He has not, and I, I do want to. It'd be hard to build a great team around a guy that you have and, question marks on, though. And I, and look, I, and I'm going to say this right now. No matter if the offensive line's crappy, if the wide receivers get hurt, whatever, there is zero excuses for Daniel Jones this year. So if that all does happen, he's still gone. It's just bad luck at that point, where you know what you yeah. didn't get, you didn't get a fair chance, and it's bad luck. Who cares? Yeah, I got two things. Number one, my Hawaii bet from Wednesday did not hit. Oh no! Saturday, Hawaii got blown out by. But you literally World Series Hawaii. Bet hit. Hmm. Yes, Hawaii. that's the important one. I mean, that was that was easy. That Hawaii yeah, bet score hit. Score their opponents sixty to five. Can you imagine that? Yeah, they, that's they, those kids aren't twelve. I'm just saying that that's like bench warmers. I am twelve. BS. Also, I'm I'm scouting the week one line still. Your pack is getting blown out week one. The Vikings are gonna cr- really crush them on oh, week one. Wow. I think by two or more touchdowns. All oh right. my god. That's gonna do it for us here on WHPC Sports Talk. For Matt Leonard, Braden Dan- walk away. <laughs> from Matt Leonard, Braden Daniello, and Ross Levine, I'm Michael Merlo here on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. Have a great rest of the night, everybody.